Good afternoon. I'm Mayor Leary and Gaylor Baird, and welcome to this community briefing on Lincoln and Lancaster County's pandemic response efforts. Uh, thank you for joining us to learn more about how you can protect yourself, your loved ones, and our entire community. And thanks also to Margie Prop for providing interpretation. As I reviewed many of the questions and comments that my office received this past week, the ones about our vaccination efforts, not about snow, I was reminded of a story that has become part of my family's lore. My grandfather loved to take pictures, and one of the joys of visiting him in Minnesota when I was little was the annual slideshow of family photos that he'd put on for us. He would set up his Kodak carousel slide projector on a card table in the living room and click through dozens of slides. Slides of me holding on tightly to him as he took me on a snowmobile ride, slides of my grandmother and me chasing frogs in the backyard, slides of barbecues, birthday parties, and beach trips. And one night, during my grandpa's slideshow, when my younger sister was just two years old, she brought the show to a halt when she scrambled off the couch in her powder blue-footed pajamas, stood pointing up to the screen, and not yet having seen a single picture of herself, exclaimed in classic toddler style, where's me? And with every click of the slide carousel, my little sister saw image after image in which she could not find herself. In that moment, she couldn't see how she fit into the bigger picture of our family. In asking, where's me? She was expressing a basic human need we all have, the need to understand where we fit in the order of things around us. And that, of course, is the fundamental need so many people have right now as we undertake the gargantuan task of vaccinating our entire community. People naturally want to know where they fit into this effort. People want to know when and where they will appear on the COVID-19 vaccination schedule. People want to know where they are in the line for a shot that could save their lives. Saving lives and preventing illness is at the heart of the city's mission in this pandemic. And we have received important questions from so many of you since we last stood here to brief you. And as we have received those questions, you have reinforced for us that one of our health departments and my biggest challenges and responsibilities now and in the months ahead is to communicate the answers to these questions as clearly and accurately as possible based on the information available to us. And with that in mind, we have created a special page on our local website with the vaccine prioritization information as it currently stands. That page can be found when you go to covid19.lincoln.ne.gov and click on the Vaccine Information tab. As you review the content there, please do keep in mind three important facts. First, the state of Nebraska, guided by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, sets the prioritized order for people to receive vaccinations. In other words, there is only limited flexibility at the local level when it comes to determining who gets to line up for a shot and in what order. Second, that prioritized order of vaccine recipients is subject to change. The pandemic continues to be a rapidly evolving situation and therefore operations can and will change as circumstances do. We saw that happen a few weeks ago when the CDC shifted people ages 65 and older into a higher priority vaccination phase. Third, the state determines the number of vaccine doses allocated to our local health department each week based on the supply available to Nebraska. The state has told Lincoln and Lancaster County that we can expect to receive about 3,900 doses per week for the time being, although we are hopeful that that number may go up in the coming weeks if Moderna or Pfizer increase production or if a new vaccine receives emergency use authorization. We will update you regularly as we know more. In the meantime, we continue to make great progress with the vaccine doses we do receive. Our health department, in collaboration with our wonderful community partners, quickly, efficiently, and safely vaccinated about 4,800 healthcare workers during the first two mass vaccination clinics at Pinnacle Bank Arena. This week, we begin vaccinating the next priority groups, those who make up Phase 1B. Health Director Pat Lopez will share more details on our progress with vaccinations in just a moment, and Tom Lorenz of Pinnacle Bank Arena will provide more information on just how accessible the arena truly is for people attending our clinics, no matter their age or degree of mobility. As we wait for our turns to get vaccinated, 
And as we witness new variants of the virus emerge across our country and in the Midwest, please stay smart, stay safe, and stay on guard. Our local conditions and numbers improved again this week. We are so grateful for that. Uh, so the dial is moving from elevated orange to mid-orange. But do keep in mind that the risk of community spread of COVID-19 continues to be high. Our community's success in beating this virus continues to depend upon our collective commitment to wearing our masks, washing our hands, watching our distance from others while avoiding close contact, crowded places, and confined spaces. These are the proven tools we have at our disposal to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and our neighbors. At this time, I'd like to invite Director Lopez to come forward to share more about our local situation and progress. Thank you, Mayor. Yesterday we announced that very good news, um, that we will start vaccinations for some people in Phase 1B this week. <clears throat> we were eager to take this next step. We know every dose of vaccine helps protect more residents in our community. Phase 1B includes people 65 years and above and those 18 years and older with underlying medical conditions as well as essential workers. Here in Lancaster County, we will start the 1B vaccinations with our residents age 80 and above at a clinic on Friday at Pinnacle Bank Arena. This will be the third large-scale COVID-19 vaccination clinic our health department has held with the support from our community partners. In order to vaccinate on such a large scale, we are using a vaccine registry system. Once you register, you're in our system and will be notified by the health department when it's your turn to get vaccinated. This morning, we started contacting registered individuals in the 80 and up age group to schedule appointments for them to get vaccinated during the clinic this coming Friday. About 4,600 people received a phone call, email, or text message giving them a phone number to call to schedule an appointment. The phone number given is different than the COVID-19 hotline number, but the message led to many more phone calls to both the appointment number and the hotline. Between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m., the appointment number received over 66,000 calls. This caused delays and some people weren't able to get through. We added additional staff to assist with the calls and as of early this afternoon, about 3,300 people in the 80 and over age group have successfully made appointments for Friday's clinic. Call volume has also significantly decreased. We know that there will be challenges as we continue to roll out vaccine. This is not unexpected for an effort of this size and scope, and we will work quickly to address any issues that may arise. We appreciate and thank you for your patience. We also want to remind the public that the Friday clinic is not open to everyone. Please do not go to the arena Friday unless you have received an appointment for the clinic from the health department. Many hours of planning and preparation went into our first two clinics for the healthcare professionals to make sure things ran smoothly. We plan to make adjustments to our clinic process depending on the needs of the priority group being vaccinated and the number of people we intend to accommodate. Because the group being vaccinated Friday will be some of our oldest residents, we are taking steps to provide extra support and assistance. Vaccinations will take place on the lower level of the arena only, and wheelchairs will be available for those who need them. A family member or caregiver is welcome to accompany the person receiving the vaccine through the process. We will also have extra staff available to help those who may need additional assistance assistance we are providing free covered parking in the garage that's attached directly to the arena you do not have to go outside or across any streets we will have courtesy vehicles for those who need help getting from their parking spot to within the arena pinnacle bank arena has been an outstanding partner in our clinics and has worked closely with us on logistics, safety, and accessibility. 
At this time, Arena General Manager Tom Lorenz is joining us to talk about the advantages the arena provides for those clinics and about the assistance his staff is providing. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Mayor. Allow me to speak for our Pinnacle Bank Arena staff to say that we are very glad to support this community vaccination effort. We have been working closely with the Lincoln Lancaster County health officials to make these vaccination clinics easy to access, easy to maneuver through, sanitized, and safe. Pinnacle Bank Arena is uniquely situated in an easy to reach part of the city. No concerns about high speed traffic or crowded streets. We have a lot of experience in working with a variety of different events, different crowd sizes, and varying age groups. We have teamed up with Pat Lopez and her excellent staff to host two previous vaccination clinics the past two Fridays, and the participants have given us strong positive feedback on the process. Pinnacle Bank Arena, located in the Haymarket Rail Yard area, is easy to access. The vaccination clinic is set up in the main lobby area of the arena. Attached parking or very close across the street parking is available. A staff experienced in helping all kinds of patrons in a facility that is ADA accessible were components that led officials to choose the arena as a safe and easy to access uh, location. Free parking options include the Pinnacle Bank Arena Premium Garage. That's the garage just to the west of the arena. It's attached to the arena. The garage access is from Arena Drive. That's the large four-lane access road to the west of the arena. Our staff will greet you at the garage entrance. Once inside, it's easy to access from your car or truck directly into the arena. Staff will direct you to elevators that take you to the main lobby where the clinic is situated. Additional free parking is available in the City of Lincoln's Red Deck 1 parking garage directly across the street south of the arena. You can park on any floor and take the elevator down to street level. The street directly to the south of Pinnacle Bank Arena is our street. We will close our street to through traffic so it's easy and safe to cross the street from Red Deck 1 garage directly into the Pinnacle Bank Arena box office where the clinic entrance is located. If you are being dropped off by a family member or friend, they can let our street attendant know so that, the, that, you are, that you are dropping off. They can pull inside the closed street area, close to the box office entrance, so our senior guests can get inside quickly. Pinnacle Bank Arena was built to be ADA accessible. We have planned with the health department to make this clinic set all on the main floor, easy to navigate with no stairways. We will have lots of helpful staff to guide you from parking into the arena and through the vaccination process. We also have staff that will be sanitizing doors, handrails, chairs, and restrooms throughout the day to keep the vaccination area sanitized and safe. When most people think about coming to Pinnacle Bank Arena, they think about a Husker basketball game or a concert with lots of people arriving all at once. Friday's vaccination clinic will be spread out over approximately eight hours, which makes the process less hectic and more spread out. The healthcare workers and volunteers are very helpful and they will get you to the vaccination tables in a short amount of time. Instead of 10,000 people loading into the arena in one hour, the clinic will have about three to 400 people per hour, which will make it much easier and much less congested. Our staff and I look forward to serving our honored seniors. And again, we're honored to be part of the process. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I know you'd rather be announcing a big new concert, but these clinics are really a major step forward, getting us back to the arena for entertainment. We deeply appreciate everything you and your wonderful staff have done and are doing to provide this life-saving vaccine. We have big plans for the week of February 8th as well. We're working with our partners to provide on-site vaccinations for residents of our independent living communities. Staff from area pharmacies will be efficiently providing these vaccinations right where these residents live 
so we do not plan to have as large a clinic next week. We have also started vaccinating some of the essential workers in Phase 1B, including law enforcement personnel. We look forward to vaccinating those and other priority groups in Phase 1B as soon as we have more vaccine available. Our priority will remain with those who are in that age group of 65 and older. Last Friday, we held a clinic for some of the final groups of healthcare providers in Phase 1A and vaccinated just over 2,400 people. That was helping us move into Phase 1B this week. With that clinic and the first one a week earlier, we have vaccinated, as the mayor said, around 4,800 healthcare professionals in the last two weeks. As soon as people enter the arena, you will be greeted by staff and receive a temperature check. Vaccinations for the clinic uh, are on, we're on the second level, sorry. Dedicated staff filled numerous syringes with COVID-19 vaccine. Those being vaccinated took a seat next to the experienced healthcare provider who gave that quick shot in the arm and then put on a Band-Aid. After a person received vaccine, it was on the way onto the waiting area for 15 minutes where they also saw a reminder on the big screen to come back for that second dose, so they're fully protected. We have made considerable progress in a short time. You, you will recall that we received our first doses of COVID-19 vaccine in our community on December 14th, just seven weeks ago. Since that time, Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department and our partners, Brian Health, CHI St. Elizabeth, Lincoln Surgical Center and Blue Stem Health, as well as long-term care facilities, have administered 30,400 doses of COVID-19 vaccine. The priority group that received most of those vaccines is our health care providers and long-term care and assisted living residents. Here's what that means for you. You will see your physician, nurse, dentist, optometrist, dermatologist, pediatrician, specialist, or other healthcare or behavioral health professional. You can be assured that these trusted professionals have had the opportunity to receive a safe and effective vaccine. If you have a family member who has a, an emergency and EMT arrives at your home, that first responder and the emergency room staff have also been vaccinated. Also receiving vaccines in phase 1A were residents, as I said, of long-term care and, and assisted living facilities. Vaccinating these vulnerable residents and the staff who care for them is a critical step in providing additional protection to those most at risk. With partnerships, planning, and hard work, our community has accomplished a great deal. While the vaccine is not yet available for the general public, we will not stop our efforts until everyone who wants a vaccine can receive one. As I mentioned earlier, the first step to getting vaccinated is to register. About 68,250 Lancaster County residents have now registered using the new online form at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov. As doses become more available for your priority group, we will use the information in your registration form to connect you, contact you to set up an appointment for your vaccination. Registration is open to all county residents, but those who are in phase 1B, those 65 and older, and those with underlying medical conditions should register soon. The health department has a list of those considered essential workers, and staff have been contacting them and their employers directly about vaccinations. Family members and caregivers are encouraged to assist those who need help to register. Those who do not have online access or need assistance may call the COVID-19 hotline at 402-441-8006 to register. The form is available in English and Spanish. Our health department also has interpreters available to assist callers who speak other languages. Again, if you are age 80 and over, and want a vaccine, but you have not registered, call 402-441-8006 as soon as possible. The simple electronic form captures basic information that will be used to help determine when the individual should be vaccinated. The information goes into a secure system and is strictly confidential. 
The state has also launched a registration site this week. Lancaster County residents only need to register once on either the health department website or the statewide website. Our health department and the State Department of Health and Human Services can securely share data as needed. If you have signed up on both sites, it won't cause any issue, but it's really not necessary. As we mentioned before, a vaccination campaign of this scope is a major undertaking. There is a lot of new information being released frequently and many moving parts at the federal, state, and local levels. We will continue to provide updates during these weekly briefings and through other channels. Now I wanna share some information about the dial. We have more good news this week. The COVID-19 risk dial has moved from elevated orange to mid orange. We have not been in mid orange since the week of October 2nd. While we are seeing continued improvement in our local indicators and information, the risk of COVID-19 spreading in our community continues to be high. We all need to remain committed to the protocols to protect ourselves and each other. I'd like to look at the data and share with you. When reviewing the past three weeks of data, some of the primary factors the health department uses to communicate risk to the public continue to improve. On the dashboard you see for the week ending January 30th, just 546 cases were reported, the lowest number of weekly cases since mid-September. As we'll show later, the number of people getting tested is down here and across the state, and this continues to contributes to the lower number of identified cases, but this is still a very welcome sign. Looking at the seven-day rolling average of new cases shows the overall decline through January. The average look took a big drop from 144 on January 22nd to 78 on January 30th. We also continue to see a decline in the number of COVID-19 patients being hospitalized. From mid-December through January 20th, hospitalizations stayed at about 100 patients per day. For about two weeks now, we've been seeing a steady decline toward the 50s. Today, we are reporting 55 patients hospitalized with 38 from Lancaster County and 17 from other communities. This is the lowest number of COVID-19 patients hospitalized since 52 patients were reported back on October 15th. As we are now able to vaccine more older adults, we hope to continue to see a decline in hospitalizations due to COVID-19. As I mentioned earlier, the number of people being tested continues to be down, and last week's numbers were impacted by the snowstorm. The drive through testing sites were closed for a few days, and fewer people ventured out to the clinic, offices, or pharmacies to get tested. The result was that just over 2,000 tests were completed last week, about 1,300 fewer than the previous two weeks. We want to remind the public that testing remains widely available in Lincoln, and this is really a valuable tool in preventing the spread of the virus. If you plan to be tested, you need to know that some adjustments are being made across the community. One of those is that Bryan Health Site at 19th and O, is closing. The last day for testing there is February 5th, but Bryan Health will continue to offer COVID-19 at its three urgent care clinics. Also, we have looked at the positivity rate. From those, from those who did get tested, we did see the positivity rate decrease from 29.2% the week ending January 23rd to 26.7% ending January 30th. As a reminder, we use multiple indicators for the risk dial, and this map shows how our local metrics are plotted to determine the portion of the risk position of the risk dial. You can see that many of the indicators continue to shift down and to the left on the map. The average testing turnaround time is near green. Contact tracing and connected cases have moved down into the yellow. New weekly cases and ICU availability have moved further down in orange. The rest of the metrics have improved some, but still remain in red. You will find the location of the risk dial now in the mid-orange section represented by the blue square 
outlined in red. With the addition of the vaccine to the existing tools and protocols we currently have, we are on the verge of getting the upper hand on this virus. Vaccinating Lancaster County residents will take time and we urge everyone to be patient and continue to take precautions to protect yourselves and others. Wear your mask, wash your distance, and wash your hands. Avoid those crowded spaces, close contacts, and confined spaces. The risk of the virus spreading in our community is still high, and we do have many months to go before a large percentage of adults will be vaccinated. For those reasons, we continue to have capacity limits currently in place here in Lancaster County to avoid people gathering in large crowds. The most recent changes to the state directed health measures do not impact the directed health measure, measure in effect for Lincoln and Lancaster County, which remains in effect until February 21st. Thank you, Director Lopez, and thank you, Tom Lorenz, for your leadership in our vaccination efforts and for taking the time to share information with our community today. At this time, I'd also like to thank everyone once again for tuning in and to see if anyone has any questions. Hello, this is Bailey Bishop with 1011. Um, I am just we got dozens and dozens of calls into the newsroom this morning about the issues people were having getting through those phone lines. Would you just be able to provide some information about um, what went wrong there and just what might be done, be being done to ensure that it's not an ongoing problem? Sure. I know that our city team has taken steps to address it, and I'll ask Director Lopez to come up and share more about the details. Hi, Bailey. Well, I first want to say we had about 38,000 calls in the first two hours. Uh, and some of that was um, the number. We're just not quite sure. We had heard it was posted on a Facebook page somewhere. We're not able to confirm that, so I can't say that. But I also think it was because people were so anxious to get registered. So uh, the next time we send out a message, we'll be doing it a little bit differently and staggering the time frame for how we send the messages out in assisting individuals. We also are making calls to individuals. I don't think people realize that there are some individuals that don't have email or can't receive text messages. So we're contacting them directly to schedule their appointments. So while it was really a challenge this morning and not one we wanted to see, I have to tell you that, uh, you know, it's been really running very smoothly since 11 o'clock, about 11 o'clock this morning. And all of our staff uh, have said how happy people are. You know, it's an indicator of how, how much people want to get this vaccine in our community, which is a very great thing. But we're planning for it to be much smoother for them in the future to be able to register. Pat Riley with the Journal Star. Hi, Riley. Hi. Um, with this age group that's currently targeted, the, the 85, 80, 80 year old and up, one of the smaller population groups in Lancaster County, you know, are, are you guys already thinking ahead to how you will diffuse the um, kind of call volume that you imagine you might have or, or the vaccine clinic going to be max, mass vaccines? Or are you going to have providers available later in the in the phase one C or two? We're, we're going to just continue um, to work by the age groupings of people who have registered, and we're structuring those volumes for what we know we can staff um, and allocating times. We've uh, expanded the time frames out to allow more time for people uh, to be able to enter and exit and receive the vaccine. And we'll continue to make adjustments as we move forward with that. Uh, we have tremendous support from our community partners in providing the vaccines together. So that's our plan for right now until something else changes and more vaccine is available. We're already looking for once we move through this age grouping, what is the next age grouping? And like I said, Riley, we're 
instead of notifying everybody all at once, we'll be notifying them in a sequential manner so that um, they'll be able to get, call in and get registered. Our team's doing a debrief on that right now. Director Lopez, this is Bill with 1011. A quick follow-up on that. I know the city sent an email that um, extra staff needed to be brought in. Uh, do you know about how many people were answering phones in the morning and then how many more needed to come? You know, I think we started out, I, you know, Bill, I don't know, probably over 50, uh, but at the end of the day, at the end of the time, we had over 100. And I can just tell you that we have some of our partners also from uh, Parks and Rec and from Aging Partners answering the phone, but every single staff that is at the health department was answering the phone. So we had well over 100 people assisting. I was even actually assisting people and getting them scheduled. So we were doing everything we could to be responsive because of our concern for these individuals trying trying to get their appointment. Is there a possibility uh, as we get to age groups maybe that are more online, a registration process, or not registration, but actually signing up to get the vaccine could move online? Yeah, and Bill, we already have that process ready to go. And you're uh, really correct. As we move into other age groupings, everything will be able to be done online, including registering and then scheduling the appointments. Hi, Pat. This is Matt Olberty with the Journal Star. I've got several vaccine questions for you. Okay. So out of those uh, 30,400 uh, vaccinations that you've mentioned, do you happen to know how many of those have been uh, second vaccinations or how many people have had both doses? Um, I do. You just need to give me a minute here. I think it's probably over, we've done over 3,000, some probably close to 4,000 that are second doses, Matt. So for, so example, for example, all of our EMTs and those are completed their second dose. Uh, and many of our long-term cares and assisted livings are receiving the second dose. I can get you an exact number. I actually have it written down, but not right in front of me. Sure, and I'm assuming that those numbers don't include the hospital numbers, the ones from Brian and CHI Health that they've done for their own staffs. There's those, and we are updating that now with them. They're providing us additional information on those first and second doses. So okay, we'll, I just wonder, if Brian this morning listed roughly about 4,500 people, right? Staff and then providers who had had um, second doses, right? Um, second, secondly, I was just wondering. The state has said that they're they got an um, an increase in doses, vaccine doses this week, and they expect to get it in the coming weeks, about 16 percent from what they've been getting. Have you guys been notified what your increase will be? The governor had pretty much said that he can expects to continue allocating them on a population basis? Uh, actually, I believe they just received um, their doses uh, afternoon today. And I was talking with Angie Ling and they're still not, uh, we should be being notified tomorrow what, the, what that means for us. So I was just checking before I came here. Okay. And then in terms of giving out the doses in phase 1B, the governor suggested giving at least 90% to that older group. Is that how you guys are doing it, splitting it up 90-10 yeah. or roughly? And so, roughly. Then the, mm -hmm. and then so the other 10%, you're sort of uh, dedicating that to the essential worker groups like fire, uh, police, firefighters, going kind of going down that list. Yeah, so the next group that we're working with are police, sheriffs, um, UNL police, because we call in UNL police to assist our police here. Uh, some of our corrections staff, um, we actually have FBI folks here that we would take care of as first responders that assist in our community. And we'll be working with adult and children, um, child protective workers as well. So we're ready to go in those groups. And if you're in one of the essential groups, we already have been in contact with employers and staffing, and we have numbers of those individuals who need to be vaccinated. So they don't need to register on the regist uh, registration site because they'll be contacted as a group to get their vaccine. 
when we have more available. Any question? Oh, sorry, go ahead. I just had one follow up. I, it's, I seem to see indications on social media today that those vaccinations had already been going on. The police department, um, Lincoln Police Department on their Twitter account indicated that they were receiving vaccines today. Is that right. your understanding? Yes, okay. Great. Right, Thank because, you. because we're in 1B and there are smaller groups who are doing them so we can really focus on our 80 and older at um, Pinnacle. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Director Lopez, uh, KFR had a question. It says CNN this morning illustrated Nebraska as one of the states in which a virus variant has been detected. Can you provide information on that, particularly with regard to Lancaster County? We don't have the virus variant in Lancaster County. And actually, I was on a call at 9 a.m., so I have to check that further. Uh, we had a mistake put in where put on and the CNN on the CDC website where it was identified we had the virus. But to my knowledge, I can't answer that yet. I, I haven't been notified, and I think all of us as health directors would be notified if the virus was found, the variant. Dr. Lopez Riley with the Journal Star. Um, obviously now we're in phase 1B, and um, in the recent months you talked about 60% of the uh, local pandemic death toll, you know, has occurred since um, December 1st, pre predominantly in the long-term care facilities. What, what are you guys, um, you know, expecting the um, death trends maybe in the coming weeks? I know it's a, you know, kind of don't want a morbid curiosity, but uh, are you guys expecting that fewer people will die in the coming months um, because of the vaccine? Yeah, you know, especially as we vaccinate that age group, which is why, you know, the governor has identified those 65 and older and both prioritize the long-term care and assisted living staff and residents. We're working really hard with um, our long-term cares and with the healthcare association to really encourage staff um, to be vaccinated that are working in those facilities. We've also done a lot of work with uh, both um, the team at the Nebraska Medicine that goes out and works with long-term care centers and um, St. Elizabeth's who provides the monoclonal antibody. And we have seen the benefits of the monoclonal antibody from preventing hospitalization and deaths in this age group. And we're actually seeing a slowing of numbers of our infections in long-term care and assisted living and that is a trend we are very much uh, working to sustain. This is Brent with uh, Channel 8. Uh, going back to the uh, vaccine clinic, we heard from uh, a lot of people today who were uh, frustrated about uh, the venue. They said it's hard for elderly people to uh, get to PBA. And uh, you and Tom, of course, explained a lot of the accommodations being made. But going forward, is the plan still to do um, at least for the older members of phase 1B clinics at uh, PBA, or will that change? You know, um, we're looking at each situation and the availability of PBA and where we are at in the community. And I just want to correct something for as many people maybe who have a concern about PBA. We have heard from an equal number of people that are really pleased that we're using PBA and think it will work well. But we're constantly looking. We're looking at a site in North Lincoln right now. We're looking at another site in South Lincoln. So as more vaccine is available, we will move various sites around. But I think the one thing that we really um, need to emphasize, you know, is the time of year we are at in our community. And PBA affords our, pop, our elders coming into the, to the arena to be in a covered parking area so they don't have to go outside into the elements. And there are very few, if any other places in our community right now that can offer that for them uh, to be entering safely. And we know that the arena has all of the ADA requirements met. Pat, do you also want to mention that? Uh, I've also heard from a lot of people uh, that uh, said that they uh, were called or contacted and, and not given an exact appointment time or they were given an appointment like time range. Um, I know it's gonna be about eight hours throughout the day, but um, should people have an exact appointment time? And if not, what should they do? 
Well, I, I guess I, I'm not sure what that means. Um, the people I scheduled are coming like at various times. They're definitely Person scheduled. One. We, we heard from people who said they were told to come between eight and three o'clock. It was kind of a wide time range. I'm sorry, but that, Brent, that really can't be true because that's like come in. We're scheduling people in increments. So they're being told to come in at one or 115, 120, 140, 130. We try to make it on the hour. So I'm, I'm confused that anybody would say they were told to come in between eight and three. So if someone was told that, uh, what should they do? Who should they contact? They should just call back in on the 441-8006 line, and we'll be happy to help them. Do you want to talk okay, and then just one last thing real quick to confirm. Will people be given information about their next appointment, so their second shot, um, at the clinic on Friday, or how will they receive that information? Yes, they'll be given information then, and then we have their contact information, and we'll just schedule them. Thanks. Yes. Director Lopez, and maybe this is a question for Tom as well. Do you know about how many staff it's taken between the county and the city and PBA to uh, to run the vaccination clinics in the past and how many more will be needed uh, for this Friday? I'll let Tom answer about his staff, but we usually have 80 staff down there, 80 to 100. Uh, when we're there and we've ramped that up and we'll have additional and I know Tom, I'm going to let Tom speak for PBA. Hi Bill. We support with uh, probably 40 to 50 additional staff um, and and there some are part-time, some are the full-time staff that are there and so we provide whatever we need and this one we've obviously increased uh, more staff so that we can meet people uh, in the parking garage being able to get them in at the different levels and down to the floor, uh, push wheelchairs and that type of thing. So uh, we feel good about the level that we're at. You know, there's one thing I wanted to add to that, you know, when we send out the information for people to make an appointment, those are individuals that we have in our registration system. So when people call in, we're able to get their appointment scheduled by name. Um, so if people try to call in that are not, haven't been notified by us and not in our registration system, they will not be able to schedule an appointment. I think that's really important. So even we've been aware at times there has been some sharing when we sent links out, which is, it is very disappointing, but it has happened and we've worked through that. But in this particular situation, when we are scheduling members of the community, it's going to be for that specific community member. And you know, you asked about uh, the times next week. It could be at an independent living, they might be saying that. But um, I, I would encourage anybody that's listening to this, if you thought you heard a time between 8 and 3 to come, you need to call back at the 402-441-8006 and get a specific time. That's how we're preventing overcrowding and making sure that we can assist um, all our community members in a safe and, and effective way. Are there any other questions from the media? Mayor Riley of the Journal Star, I'm going to ask you a JPA question. Um, does the does the vaccination clinic host site at the PBA? I mean, is is that affording any extra um, sort of value in terms of costs or payments, and and in that it's used for this purpose? Um, as, a, as opposed to other venues? I mean, or are federal dollars able to support, you know, venue rental for a max vaccination clinic? I don't know the answer to your question, Riley. We have received federal assistance for our arena because it is an event venue that has obviously been economically impacted by the pandemic. I'd ask uh, Tom Lorenz to come forward and see if he has any other detail he could provide you. Hey, 
Hey, Riley. As we work through this with um, uh, being a city entity and working with uh, the city department, the Lancaster County, uh, Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department, uh, we're working through to make sure expenses are covered and uh, we'll see where there is any additional funding in the future. This is not um, a windfall for the arena, but it's certainly the right use of the arena and it's uh, a purpose that uh, I feel very good about that we can be part of the solution moving forward. The more people we get vaccinated now, when it comes time to, for summer, we'll have that many more people who can feel comfortable about coming out and seeing our events. Riley, I wanted to add on to that, uh, since we've looked at multiple different sites, need to know like at the arena uh, we have the staff there and we will look at that what those additional costs are but we're not paying rental um, at the arena that i'm aware of at all um, at this time it's just basically that it's there they also have all the supplies that we need outside of medical and that is something that isn't always available everywhere so we have to think of everything from chairs, tables, uh, we have to think about restroom locations, we have to think about trash facilities, we have to think about a place that our staff can safely rest uh, on occasion, but the most important thing is getting all those tables and chairs and all of that set up, and normally we have to do all of that ourselves, and that is something that is provided at the arena, and many of the other locations that we're looking at in addition to all the disinfecting that happens, if we go to another site like that, we have to have all of the staff there to do that. We have to know they're trained to do that. We have to know they have the right chemicals and the right things to use. So um, I appreciate you asking that question because I think oftentimes people don't realize what goes into setting up a clinic that's really safe for our community members to come into. Are there any further questions? Okay. Well, if there are no further questions, please allow me to remind you that the website where you can go, if you two are wondering, where's me, is at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov. It's simple. You find the green vaccine information tab. Click on that, and that's how you find out more about where you fit into the prioritized vaccination schedule as it stands today. And while you're there, if you haven't done so already, please do sign up on our local registry to get notified when it's your turn to receive a vaccine. If you prefer to register by phone, you can call our health department at 402-441-8006. Um, and before we close, know that our health team, our healthcare system partners, and everyone at the City of Lincoln share your sense of urgency to make progress and put this pandemic behind us. One day, we all will have remarkable stories to tell and pictures to show our grandchildren about this moment in history. And as they listen and look, our grandchildren undoubtedly will be very glad that they are nowhere to be found in our snapshots from this time. But knowing that future generations will look back on all we endured and accomplished, let's make them proud. Let's continue to care for one another like the big Lincoln and Lancaster County family that we truly are. We will get through this together. Thank you. Thank you, Margie.